Cheshire is a small suburban town that lies in southern Connecticut. Incorporated in 1780, the bedding plant capital of Connecticut has a population of just under 30,000. Cutting through the center of town is CT Route 10, a road that travels vertically through the entire state of Connecticut and into neighboring Massachusetts. On this road, you will find our school, Cheshire High School. CHS is small compared to other surrounding high schools, with only around 1,400 students and 214 faculty, making the student-to-faculty ratio a comfortable 15 to 1. Cheshire High is truly a remarkable institution. Multiple times, it has been recognized as one of the top high schools in the country. Students here at CHS are statistically well above average on graduation rates, SAT scores, and advanced placement participation. I think this school is really exceptional. And some of my colleagues when I first started had said the same thing, like, this school is different and it's, it's like special. I didn't understand what they meant and now I'm like, no, but it is. What you're seeing here is a film called Bob's Locker Party. This 11 minute video was created by a student from Cheshire High in the year 1974 and allows us to look into the past to see our school, which, at the time, was only 21 years old. Although many people do not think of Cheshire High School as a historical landmark, this building has been around through many ups and downs in our country's history. When the school was first built, the United States was in the midst of the Cold War, the geopolitical tensions between NATO and the Soviet Union. As honorary Cheshire High School historian tells us, the threat of nuclear war was a daily concern. There were some things about nuclear war. Uh, people were concerned, and in those days, kids were told, okay, if there's, a, is it, if there's an alert, get under your desk, and that will save you. And uh, that obviously wasn't true. Just 10 years after the school's opening, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech to almost 250,000 people down in Washington, D.C. And more recently, Students and faculty watched from the inside of their classrooms the attack on the Freedom Towers on September 11, 2001. But there was a Cheshire High School before this one. A lot of people don't know that. It was located in what is now Humiston School. And I believe it came in somewhere around 1894. Uh, there, were being, there were classes being held in different parts of town. I think the Grange had a couple of classes. Uh, but there is a yearbook for the class of 1897. And this is one of them. There were, I believe, 19 students in that class. And uh, from what I understand, they all had a yearbook. There might have been a few extra printed. I ended up owning two of them. This book has no photos in it. It's just a lot of printing. And they had a class prophecy. And strangely enough, each member of the class had a, uh, a nickname. Like there was Girl Chaser 1 and Girl Chaser 2. I don't know how they determined that, but I, I thought that was interesting because I don't think we have nicknames for people at least that appear officially. The Cheshire High School that we are currently in was opened in 1953, and the first graduating class was 1955. On the first day of school, the total enrollment was just 575 students with only 25 faculty members. As we saw in Bob's Locker Party, Cheshire High School looked much different. In fact, it looked like this. If we take a look at the interior, we can see that it looks much different than the current layout of Cheshire High. If we start to the right, we see that the front drive was a large half circle that connected to a much quieter Route 10. The school had only one cafeteria, which also doubled as an auditorium, and the front hallway contained English, social studies, and science classes, whereas today, that is our world language hallway. Towards the back of the school is the library, which was half of the size of the current one, and we also see a draft for future classrooms that will be built around the year 1956. From then on, the school changed until it was built into the infamous figure eight shape we all know so well. Now, in the present day, we, the students, must ask ourselves, what will we do during our time here at CHS that will go down in history? I was placed here randomly by Quinnipiac, which I don't know how, but I got very lucky. Uh, a, lot, a lot of my classmates haven't had 
as great of experiences as, as I have had. And I felt welcomed since my first day. I remember my first day of college classes, uh, my professor asked us to all raise our hand if we like our internship so far. And he said, um, good luck, let me see how you like it in October. And in October, he checked back in with me and he said, you still like it? And I was like, I love it. And usually they don't allow interns to stay for a second year of internship at the same school because they want you to get a different experience. But my professor came and visited Cheshire High School and allowed me to stay because of how great of a school it was and how much, um, how great of an experience I was getting here. So yes, I had a wonderful experience and so much so that I decided to stay even longer. So far, we've seen some of this school's amazing history and have heard multiple times that CHS is truly exceptional. But what about life here at the high school? What does Cheshire High have to offer its students and faculty? The number of opportunities um, beyond the academic day is, is unbelievable and so many different kinds of opportunities. Um, we're teachers who do not get paid because not all the teachers get paid for the after school clubs that they run sometimes and even those that do go above and beyond they'll stay the extra hour. Even you know teachers that stay after school, even in terms of the academics, they'll stay past 240. They'll stay to three, they'll stay to 315. I've seen it with my own eyes, like people leaving here because they want to spend the extra time organizing for their students or meeting with that student that needs to be tutored extra longer. That's special. You don't get that at other school districts. Teachers are, you know, as soon as I'm done, they're done for the day, they go home to their families, but there are people here that would sacrifice. There are staffers, secretaries, IAs that sacrifice their time to stay with those students because they know that this is a unique opportunity where they can shape their lives for the rest. The rest of their lives can be shaped because of that singular moment or that effort that's put in that someone cares that much about you and they're just like, I gotta go. Most of the teachers here don't do that. They know the kid needs it, they're always here, and that's what's special about it. The best part about Cheshire High School is the immense support from administrators and teachers to help students pursue their passions and really achieve their goals that they're working towards. What I love about CHS is definitely the business department. I've taken many of the business courses and I've absolutely loved every single one of them. Being somebody that is planning on going into the business field, it has definitely prepared me for any endeavors that I hope to come across and will definitely be used in my future. It's the constellation of offerings and the quality of relationships and community that sets us apart. It's no one thing. It's not that we have successful sports teams. That's not the standalone. It's not that we do well by any objective and standard measures. Right, there are a number of schools who, who, who do well academically. Um, it's not just that we have students who do community service. I think it's that we do all of those things to an extremely high level. Uh, the number of students who take advanced courses, the number of students who find a path and find a way for their interest to be supported. From making a, a, a vehicle, right, one of our students kind of rebuilt an entire truck. That opportunity was made available so that we could, we could support that interest, that goal. That is what I think makes us stand apart. All the teachers are willing to help you. If you go in, they're more than willing to go over that test. They're more than willing to give you extra problems to practice. They're more than willing to teach you if you need help. I think that was one of my favorite parts. They're accommodating to everything and I had a great time. The acceptance in this school is astounding. Um, I think that's something remarkable. Cheshire High School is recognized in a lot of categories, um, and I think rightfully so. Like, the kids really do put a lot of effort and work into their extracurriculars, and it's very rewarding, I think. Um, so I do think that that's one of the, like, big things about Cheshire High School is the resiliency and ability that the students have. Presently, I, I think what's really unique about it and in comparison to a lot of other friends that I have that are teachers in other school districts, we offer such an amazing array of opportunities for students at this high school, academically in, in terms of maybe competitions, essays, poetry competitions, robotics competitions, um, musical competitions. Um, you know, that was the first thing I noticed that was a stark contrast with other places I've been or other opportunities that I heard aren't as, as 
ample in other locations and other districts. Um, and I, I thought that was really special. And the, and the students were a little bit more driven. You know, not that the, I just, I noticed that there was a, more of a spark academically. More and more kids would come after school because they wanted to get the A. And I noticed that was different and, and that was special. And I wanted to be part of that and I loved to foster that. That was one thing that I remember is there were more opportunities, kids taking advantage of those opportunities, capitalizing on those opportunities. And to know that you were a part of that and you either provided that opportunity that gave them this unique emotional and very proud moment in their life was special. That's, that's part of being a teacher. That's one of the greatest things about the whole experience. Beyond just teaching your you know, five or six classes, that's so special to do something beyond your, your academic classes. The best thing about Cheshire High School, in my opinion, is the amount of opportunity that's provided for its students. Um, as somebody who's involved in athletics, student government, and theater, I've really experienced the benefits and um, wonderful opportunities that come from all three. One of the questions that we asked our interviewees was how they thought the school had changed over the years. For Pete Cameron, he clearly witnessed the change in the school since he began his work as a hall monitor in 2001. Well, I was a police officer for 25 years. Um, I had a quite a successful and extensive career. I did everything from patrol work in a patrol car, uh, detective work, and narcotics work. Um, I was a supervisor, and then I ran a one of the patrol shifts for um, eight years as a lieutenant before I retired. And when um, when I retired in 2001. Um, I became quickly bored and I saw an ad in the paper for a hall monitor for Cheshire High School so I said why not and I applied for it. When I got here um, it was culture shock to put it quite plainly. Um, being a cop is very conservative. The laws tends to be very black and white. You're right or you're wrong. I came into an educational atmosphere that inherently is very liberal and very laid back. Um, it actually took me a little time to, uh, to acclimate. But while I was doing that, I looked around and I saw a great many of the kids here that were taking advantage of the, the environment and the sense of community that was here um, that was very much like the, you've heard of the thin blue line in the police department. It was very much like that, but on a, on a different kind of scale because it included both the, uh, the faculty and the students. I, I did see and have seen uh, over the years that sense of community. The administration and a lot of the people that worked here all that time have really made an effort to make that sense of community stronger. And I think it has over time. Um, and, and, I, and I, in spite of the fact of my culture shock, I, I, think, that, uh, I think that we've done a good job over those years. I've definitely learned a lot from the students here. I spoke to all of my classes about, yes, I was the one in front of the classroom giving some instruction, teaching them the information that I've learned, but the amount that I learned from the students here is more than I ever could have learned in a classroom, just sitting there and um, reading my books. So I really admired what the students here have taught me. I would say overall this place is pretty happy-go-lucky. Like a lot of people have optimistic personalities and I think that a lot of the teachers are really friendly and I think that that kind of carries throughout the school. Yeah. <laughs>I was drawn to Cheshire High School, not just because of the stellar faculty and our extraordinary students, both of which are absolutely true, uh, but what we have here is a situation where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And we have an extraordinary environment at the high school, and I'm so proud to be part of it. I, you, we have our Cheshire Performance Standards, you, you know, that, that's something that, that I think we've internalized as a school, students, parents, teachers. Um, complex thinking is a significant piece, it's, it's a significant standard because so much of what we do is about teaching students to think independently. 
and to think in a, in a complex way, more than just looking for knowledge, but understanding what is what meaning is, how you generate meaning, how you analyze, and then how you synthesize. How do you take what you've learned and create something new? That to me is power. If you can understand the relevance of what you learn and have a sense of a creative application of what you've learned, if you can take that forward into the world, there will be no problem that you can't solve because you understand how to use what you've learned in an application manner, in a practical way, in a real world way. I think another layer of what is so important about what we do is students become self-directed. You find something that interests you. That can, that can be anywhere from taking a senior project course to identifying, hmm, I don't know how I'm doing in this course. I'm gonna find a way to work with my teacher, to set goals for myself, to improve what I'm working on. So I see the level of student responsibility and self-direction as something that I do wanna see our kids take with them. We have an extraordinary number of students who volunteer, who support our community, uh, and that, that expectation of what I'm learning and who I am extends beyond the four walls of the high school. That to me is what I want to see you take with you as you exit and the truth that you'll always be part of the herd, but you have distinguished yourself within it and taken what, what you've learned here, take it out to the rest of the world. There are state requirements that every school has to, has to cover. So four years of English, three years of math, three years of science, three years of social studies, including civics, two years of PE. We also have requirements that are, that are unique to us, but also in other, other schools in the state. We made personal finance a requirement. Uh, students have to take a number of electives so that when you graduate, you have 22 credits. Most of our students go well beyond the 22 credits. Students can take courses so that they can challenge themselves wherever they feel it best meets their challenges. So we have college prep level courses, competitive college level prep courses. If, if you have a particular skill or a particular interest and you want to challenge yourself, we also have advanced placement level courses that, are, that, that bear college credit. I talked about this a little earlier, but ECE courses, early college experience courses, uh, where you get credit at the University of Connecticut, and those credits are transportable to most colleges in the United States. And you can take a range of courses, but what's great is the number of offerings means you can take a course in something that you were just curious about and might want to explore. Uh, we have a number of electives in, C in, in career and technical education, in family and consumer science, in business, in the sciences, in mathematics. In, we have electives in English, we have electives in, we have certainly a, a strong world language set of courses in our school as well. Really, for all of the options available to you, the world's your oyster. You can find a pathway for your interests, for your desired skill level, to challenge yourself, anything's possible. So there are a lot of factors that we look for in our kids to play sports other than just their talent. We want kids who are dedicated, uh, kids who have great character, and also really uh, a member of a team. So many times young kids just think, well, I'm really good at a sport, I'm going to play this sport. And that's not necessarily the case. There are so many other things that go into an athlete that we look for. Uh, one of them is really character. And what kind of kid are you away from the field? Uh, do you work hard? Do you work hard in school? Uh, do you work hard at practices? Those are really the things that we would want to look for in an athlete. So if I were to tell an athlete, what's the most important thing? Be a team member. We have 31 varsity sports. We offer uh, numerous sub-varsity sports, JV and freshman under those 31 sports. So quite a few teams. 
Uh, we range anywhere from uh, obviously football down to golf uh, and anything in between. Uh, all the popular sports that most schools have. Uh, in the fall, we have 10. In the winter, we have 10. And in the spring, we have 11 uh, varsity sports. Those are our 31 sports that we offer. As for the coaches of our stellar teams, many of them are teachers here at the high school who, during the day, teach history, science, or even Spanish. Others are outside hires. Excellent coaches from around Connecticut brought in to help improve the quality of our teams. One woman, however, has been here for nearly 50 years, and many of you know her as the in-school suspension monitor, but to others, she's known as coach. Cindy Hitchcock was a physical education teacher and coach here at Cheshire High School for more than 40 years. We had the privilege of being able to sit down with Miss Hitchcock and reflect on her years here at Cheshire High School. I mean, when I first started, we had one gym between, we shared it between four teachers. We used to only have three classes a day. And um, so it's grown uh, considerable. They, you know, they built a new gym and they put on more, a lot more rooms. So the faculty's larger and the student body's larger. And, um, you know, there's a lot more classes involved. I mean, we went from three classes to working six, five and six, seven classes a day, you know. So it's just, it's, the school has grown a lot. Because the biggest reason is I wanted to coach. And I wanted to coach, um, I thought at the time, basketball. <laughs> and um, so the job was open and there was coaching uh, abilities here. So I interviewed and got the job. And it's probably the best job I've ever had. I said I loved it, you know, and I ended up coaching basketball, volleyball, and track, so I got my coaching in. If I were to look at our team programs and what really sets us apart, what gives us our success? One, we have great feeder programs. Uh, we have a lot of youth programs and a lot of our sports. Kids start young, sometimes too young, uh, but uh, kids start young. Our parents are really supportive. They really get involved in our athletic programs. Uh, they help out in a number of ways, not only fundraising, but uh, just make sure things are running smoothly as well being. And our coaches are really dedicated. Uh, they spend a lot of time in the off season doing things to help improve their knowledge of the sport, improve their uh, knowledge as a coach. So those three combinations really kind of help us uh, make a difference in our programs. I think sports have changed. Uh, you know, what we, if I were to look back when I first started as a teacher and coach compared to now, more and more athletes are specializing in the sport than they were back then. Uh, you no longer see a lot of athletes playing three sports. Kids are usually dedicated to one, maybe two sports. That's a big change in it. The other big change I see is just that uh, push to get into college and try to get some money for college where that's usually not the ticket we try to explain to parents and athletes that the the percentage of kids getting money in college for sports is very small where the percentage of kids getting money for academics is high so sometimes the emphasis is put in the wrong place so those are two big changes that, that I've seen I would really like to change the concept of don't play to try to get to college with the sport. Play because you love the sport. And not necessarily play, but be involved in the program. Not everybody can play, but there are so many benefits from just being involved in a program uh, that down the road it's really going to pay dividends. So I try to emphasize that to kids. Play for the love of the sport. Cheshire High is, is a great place to be. I, I, I love working with the kids. We have great coaches. Our staff is, is supportive of athletics. Uh, over 50% of our student body plays at least one sport. 
which is good. Kids are involved. They get involved in so many things. I think if you looked at our student body, probably 75%, if not more, are involved in some type of activity. And that's a pretty good number. We want our kids to be involved, whether it's athletics, band, music, arts. We want kids to be involved. And if we can get them involved in athletics, great. If there's other things they can do, even better. So all I tell them is, look, be a Ram any way you can be. Cheshire High School has many organized extracurriculars, and notorious among them is the drama department. My name is Taryn Choyne. I am a teacher here at Cheshire High, and my schedule is split between English courses and theater courses, and I also direct the fall play. Uh, when I first started teaching here, of course, I really loved teaching literature, and I was very excited to finally get a high school lit position. Um, that was something I really wanted to do as soon as I got my certification, but I had been teaching middle school, which I also really enjoyed. But I also knew that like my teaching would never be complete until I got incorporated with uh, the drama program. So I remember um, like within the first couple of weeks trying to find out like who the drama teacher was and finding him and connecting myself with him and saying like whatever you need I'll be like here to help out and going to all those rehearsals and just like being very satisfied that I had found my people um, in connecting with like the theater department. So that was also really nice finding a new home and finding really great colleagues but also um, finding the theater department was probably the best part. The biggest change in the program really far predates me, so I, I didn't have that here, but my understanding is that initially they only did a musical, and the musical was particularly a senior show, and so they didn't have a school-wide theater program, but there was another teacher prior to me who started bringing that into it, so by the time I came in, a lot of those changes had already happened. Although the extracurriculars of the CHS drama program are great for its students, they also have the possibility to attain these opportunities in the classroom. For theater, we have a few classes that are offered on a regular basis, and then we have a few classes that come when we can get enough interest and sign up and, and we have the room for, for me to teach them. Um, the standard classes, we have what's called Fundamentals of Theater, and that is the introductory theater class. It's an acting-focused class. All grades can take it, although it's primarily freshmen and sophomores. Um, and I have actors who take it, but I also get a lot of kids who take it in an attempt to learn to be more confident in making presentations and working with groups, so it's a more wide range class for anyone with interest. We then have the advanced theater class, which is definitely more for the kids who have really enjoyed the acting portion and want to get more challenged in their performing skills. It asks them to do some more challenging work, um, a little more independent work. And then our third class is the Aries Ensemble, which is an honors credit class that the kids have to audition to get into. And then there's a performance that is done in public as a result of their work in the class. And then the classes that kind of come and go if we have time. We have a directing class that has been very successful, a playwriting class that just kind of came back this year after several years being off the books, and then a theater history class that has had trouble getting the enrollment going, but I'm really hoping that we'll get students interested in it because they just simply don't read a lot of plays in their English classes other than Shakespeare. And I think that it's good for them to have a well-rounded view of the art. Despite the offering of these classes, the best place to find these experiences of the CHS drama department is within its extracurricular productions. I think what we do um, well in a lot of these top schools in the area is exactly, as I said, we take the stuff seriously. We do good quality work. We have high standards for our students and we want to have an audience who leaves here not saying that was a good high school play, but that was a good play. One thing that I know Ms. Turney and I like 
both agree on and that we like really try to instill in both of our productions is the concept of ensemble casting and ensemble working. Like we really both agree that like the point of the musical or the fall play is really about working together with a group of people to build a product that like the production that like only has value if everyone's getting something out of it. So we really try to make sure that like everyone has a, a position that they enjoy and that they feel valued um, and that they understand that no one position is more valuable than the next. Whether it's having a lead and being on stage or working backstage, um, everyone has a role that is valuable. So that's something that we both agree on. I think the best way to advocate for our program, the best uh, selling point perhaps is the way to say it, is we take it very seriously. We have fun, don't get me wrong, the shows are a good time, but we don't make excuses and say, well, it's high school theater. We really recognize that this is an art and it's a skill and it's something that should be treated with respect. So when you come here and you want to be a part of this, we try to teach the idea that every aspect of the theater is vital and every person is valued. And we choose shows that will interest but also challenge. I think the shows that we do are definitely challenging to the kids. I think that they hone like their talents and they're like designed to like really push um, the experiences that the kids have over four years. I think we try to do a good job of like making sure that like it's not the same thing every year that um, that we're really like using the talents we have, but we're also growing the students that we have so that they have an opportunity to experience things as widely as they can before they get out. A couple weeks ago, I was at um, the Drama Bookshop, which is a bookstore that only sells plays, and I was asking for some help to find my shows, and I was looking, said it was for our high school, and he started naming a couple shows, and I said, okay, but you know, I was also thinking of these, and he goes, oh, oh, you do real stuff with your kids. And I said, yeah, we do. It's, okay, that creates a whole different list of stuff. Let me start thinking. And I liked that, that he acknowledged that we don't do fun stuff for kids. We say, here's what the art is, and here's what you're capable of, and let's go for it. Um, it feels like an organic process of, like, we, you know, in the fall, uh, the kids that do one acts come up on the radar and we start to notice people who have personalities that like really shine on stage and who capture attention and you know people start recruiting immediately saying like you you need to come be part of this or you know it becomes a joke if you find a person in your class who is just very uh, outgoing and you know personable um, but doesn't have like their people yet to say like well why don't you come why don't you come try theater um, you know, a little bit of that sort of like misfit toy, uh, act, you know, angle, but like it works really well when you need an eclectic group of people um, and personalities to function in your group. But that said, I also think that, um, I think that the program Ms. Chorney has developed in her classes has also really laid the foundation for like really strong skills. And I think more kids are getting involved with theater based on like a confidence of like how they feel on stage and how and how they feel performing. I think one of the things we do here very well, and I, I can't compare it to other people because I'm not in the rehearsal, but I think we create a really strong sense of community. And I think that's something Mr. Mayo and I find that's very important for us, that as much as the end result of the show is important, the experience is important. And I could go in rehearsal and say, okay, you do it like this, and you do it like this, and you do it like this, and have a beautiful show at the end, but the student won't have learned anything. They've learned how to imitate me. Whenever I talk about sports, I always say, like, you know, the, the track kids are probably the most motivated kids. They're very independent. They know how to push themselves. But whenever I talk about the theater department, I always say, I first always talk about the kids, because that's who I think of first. And I always say um, the theater kids are, like, the nicest kids in the whole sport. But the arts program here at Cheshire High School is much more than just theater. Here at CHS, we have an exemplary chorus department, music program, and visual arts department that allows students to follow their artistic passions with the help from talented faculty, some of which are still working in their field, such as choral director Beth Malvetsi. 
When I came to Cheshire High School, the choral program was only part-time. The previous teacher, I think, had three choruses, and she taught history for the other half of her time. Uh, so one of my goals when I first came here was to grow the department, and uh, we have essentially doubled it in size. We have six choirs. Uh, we have two mixed choirs, an introductory chorus and a upper level concert choir, a women's chorale, a men's chorus, uh, which is our only extracurricular choir, that's the Ramblers, and they meet after school on Fridays. Um, and then we have a, two select uh, ensembles, a chamber choir sort of magical group, uh, that's the VIPs, and also a vocal jazz ensemble. I think one of the unique things about our department is that we have uh, such great diversity in the number of ensembles that we offer. Um, I think it's uh, something that there's a place for everybody, I think, here, um, regardless of their level of experience. So certainly students can come in and have no experience and start with an introductory choir and work their way up to participating in a select choir. But I think that, that the options and the opportunities that they have are, are vast, so that uh, is a good draw, I think. We're very fortunate to have some very dedicated educators in our school system and uh, they care about students and they love music and they're passionate about what they do. Um, they're great mentors, I think. It, uh, music is contagious and I, at least that's what I hope uh, that I'm able to convey along with my colleagues and really to promote that lifelong uh, participation in music. Um, I love the fact that we're able to offer students not only the diversity in the number of choirs that we have, but also diversity in the styles and genres of music that we offer. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, different theme concerts every year. Um, what they can range from opera to Broadway to barbershop to um, African American spirituals and gospel music to big band and jazz. Uh, again, there's something for everybody. As for instrumental music, Mr. Ron Casulo, director of jazz studies and assistant band director, has been here since 1982. And for a fun fact, Mr. Casulo was the first hall monitor here at the school. I loved the music program here. I loved the um, loved the offerings that the district offered. I, I loved that you know there were a lot of different things that kids can get involved in. Um, I was particularly interested in the jazz program since that's where my background was, um, and at the time when I came on full time mid-90s, the jazz program was really starting to take off. It was one of the reasons why I was brought on full-time. Um, and so when the offer did come, would you like to be here full-time? Because I was doing the jazz program part-time. I had been for like the past couple of years. And then when the offer came to do it full-time, and to be the assistant band director with the marching band, I had been doing that anyways. Um, I, I jumped at it because I saw it as, as a real opportunity to build something. You know, I had been in other districts, uh, two other districts, and in those other districts, they didn't have the music programs that were offered in Cheshire. It was quite different. Um, so, you know, you, you always thought, well, I'm going to build this program from the bottom up. Well, yeah, but when I was offered the opportunity in Cheshire, they already had a strong music program, and they were basically saying, here's the jazz program, you could build that. Well, you already have the musical foundation to work from, as opposed to you start with nothing, you know, in these other districts. So I was like, yeah, let me, let me do this. So it's been a blast. I think the opportunities that they offer kids are unique. I think um, the number of um, music electives that Cheshire Public Schools and Cheshire High School in particular have 
that they offer for the students is, is great. You know, and I don't think you have as many opportunities in other school districts. Um, the job grew and I grew with it so that you know there were opportunities to offer new electives as we've gone along you know the music technology class the jazz history class um, so I kinda was building my own job you know as we went and it was, it was just a great opportunity and and you know when we added these new classes it gave me an opportunity to explore other other areas of music and to learn more about it and then to be able to create curriculum you know based on my new, new knowledge and find ways interesting ways and uh, effective ways to pass that knowledge on to kids so the opportunities that Cheshire offer I think that's that's what makes it so different. As we all know, high school only lasts for four years. Everyone enters as a freshman, all wide-eyed and terrified, goes through the trials and tribulations, and then leaves as a mature young adult. From there, everyone's path varies. Some continue their educational career by pursuing a post-secondary degree, while others head straight into the workforce, or the military. But we all follow our own personal dreams and ambitions. For two women here at Cheshire High School, it is their job to help prepare us for the long and challenging journey ahead. Well, my experience has shown that students come back and they can't believe how prepared they've been for college. So I think most of them come back and say they have a positive experience at Cheshire High I have found through my own children that they were very well prepared that, you know, surprisingly, some of the classes were very easy for them in college because they were so prepared at the high school. Definitely. Sue and I have said this many times to each other that, yeah. you know, that's why we're here. We really do enjoy all of you guys. And every year it amazes us how many great students come through. So I remember when I started looking for this job and I thought, high school students, what am I doing with high school students? I was kind of like afraid mm -hmm. of them. And then when you're here, it's like unbelievable how great the kids are. Very impressed. As we know, this school produces some rather exceptional students, some of which have gone on to do some extraordinary things. Many have become athletes, such as former manager of the Detroit Tigers, Brad Asmus, NHL Hall of Fame inductee, Brian Leach, whose 90 mile per hour fastball helped advance the Rams onto the state championships for sophomore year, and Matt Generous, ice hockey defenseman for the EC Red Bulls of Salzburg, Austria, and Mrs. Generous' son. There's also Sunil Galati, the former president of the United States Soccer Federation, and Anjul Nigam, a successful actor, writer, and producer who has been seen recently in Growing Up Smith, Bad Words, and even appeared in the hit show Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Raj Sen. But there are other people like you and me who have made it to the Wall of Fame for being devoted patrons of Cheshire High School, such as Mary Balsh Dunn, graduate of the class of 1983, who earned all league honors during her time at CHS before going on to attend the U.S. Naval Academy and serving in the Persian Gulf War, and our very own Steve Chaffone, athletic director who you saw earlier. For 11,700 days, Students of all kinds have walked through these long, tiled hallways, dined in the same cafeteria, and learned in the same classrooms. We've seen here that Cheshire High School is a historical landmark, a building that has been around since 1953 and has educated some of the finest students in, I would say, not only Connecticut, but in our whole country. As Dr. Gad tells us, this school feels like more than just an institution. When I met the administrative team, when I met the superintendent, who was the former principal here, uh, when I met some of the faculty, and when I really reviewed uh, what the school is all about, when I looked at your performance standards, when I, when I saw just the quality of programming, um, it just felt like a fit. When you go through the interview process and you begin to talk to people and get to know different members of the community, 
you begin to get an insight into the, the tone of a place. And I can recall after my first and second interview, walking out thinking, this feels like home.